Hi everyone and welcome to the latest edition of the Bison Video Blog. We're into the FCS playoffs for North Dakota State. Along with Jeff Kolpak, I'm Don Mizzo. He's got his playoff game face on as we're ready to rock. <laughs> as NDSU gets set to host South Dakota State, which many expected would happen, did Jeffrey as the Jacks pounded Eastern Illinois behind Zach Zenner's nearly 300 yards. And here we go again. Just three weeks after they played, they'll do it again for the winner to get into the quarterfinals. First, uh, to quote Bob Knight, what's a game face? Is it this? <laughs> this? <laughs> that you have it. Whatever it is, you've got it this week. It is playoff time. It's the game. Everybody is a paranoid, I think, a little bit in, Absolutely. The, uh, in, in the north side of this uh, North dakota South Dakota state rivalry. For good reason, and mm -hmm. I'll tell you why, of the last 13 interconference matchups in the playoffs in the FCS, the team that lost the first game has won eight times out of 13. Wow. And that's a stat that I'm sure Bison fans will now freak out about. Take that one. To go on top of your column <laughs> you had yesterday where the number one seed has not won this championship. So what does NDSU have to do to win this coming Saturday? Well, I'll give you some good news, though. Out of the last, uh, on those interconference matchups, the home team has won seven out of the last eight yeah. games. And the one that didn't, I was talking to a guy today, Dave Colson from College Sporting News, um, he, and he said it was a Wofford, Georgia Southern game at Wofford, right. and he said Georgia Southern brought all the fans. Wofford doesn't drop particularly well. It's a small school, and that uh, it was basically a home game for Georgia Southern. So essentially you could say the last eight of those matchups, the home team has prevailed. We know it's going to be loud. We know there's going to be 19,000 there, but we do know this. Of all the teams that have come to the Fargo Dome, the one team that will not be intimidated by that is South Dakota State. I don't know how much of a factor the crowd will be in phasing the Jacks on Saturday. I really well, don't. Yeah, I don't think so either. They're not a team that has to audible every time yeah. when they get the line of scrimmage. I mean, Zach Zenner right, Zach Zenner left. <laughs> uh, can NDSU control Zach Zenner right Correct. and Zach Zenner left? That'll be the uh, question number one. 41 yards they limited to, and it was still a three-point game. Granted, the Jacks scored late to make that a 20-17 to 17 game. How do they duplicate that without Levon? Perry in the middle. Granted, the Bison run defense really stepped up against Illinois State in the season finale. Well, you still have Ryan Drevlo, I think, is a pretty good run stopper, yeah. and Brian Schatz has been uh, known to be pretty decent in, in, in the middle, but you're right. I, that's a good question. That's uh, uh, Levon was... Uh, uh, that, he took that first play of the game in South Dakota State. Set the tone. Set the tone when he threw Zenner yeah. with one arm for a five-yard loss. Now, on the flip side, the Bison offense, which seemed to find its groove against Illinois State, getting two 100-yard rushers, I think, is key A1 for the Bison. A obviously, they cannot turn the ball over. Brock Jensen did that, got picked, and didn't cost them the game. But I think they get Sam O'Jury and John Crockett going. It's going to be hard for the Jacks to get on the field because the Bison want to hold the ball for 35 minutes again. I thought the offensive line had uh, perhaps its best half of the season, at least in yeah. a month or two, mm -hmm. in the second half of the Illinois State game against a team, by the way, with two first round Correct. or first or first team selections, uh, selections yeah. on the defensive line. I, I just thought there was holes there. They were explosive. I'm talking about the line mm -hmm. now, and I think it starts there. Obviously, if if you're John Crockett and you get some sort of a seam, then. Um, you know, that, that's going to say a lot. You brought a great nerd stat. I'll bring one as well. Craig Bolson's taking over at North Dakota State is 10-1 and one coming off a of bye week. That includes the championship game last year when the mm -hmm. Bison beat Sam Houston State. The only loss was 2005 at home to Cal Davis. So obviously he'll have his team uh, ready for this game on Saturday. That's just the M.O. of what he's done here in his 10 years. Well, Mr. Nerd, why do you think that is? <laughs> See, they, they prepare well yeah. in, in the off week. They're their teams are physical. They perhaps they need that little extra week of rest, yeah. uh, you know, to get ready for the next game. There's probably a few reasons. I think in my own mind, and I think you'll agree with me, they were looking at South Dakota State all last week. They, they, Craig told us they were looking at both teams, but I think they were looking at completely the Jacks uh, last week because the Ohio Valley proved it again that 16 straight years they've lost a playoff game. Oh, come on. We all know in the season open they were looking strictly at Robert <laughs> Morris and not Colorado State. Come on, Dom. It should be a great atmosphere. It's the 100th meeting between the two teams. We don't know as of yet when we tape this if the marker will be on the line. Our marker will be on the line, I believe, on well, Saturday Well, it's my right? call since I spent all season... <laughs> Uh, earning the, yes. uh, the vaunted nickel, yep. which we stole from Grand Forks. You did in your janitor's outfit. Tell you you what, take that. I mean, uh, it's playoff time. I'll put it on the line. All right, that's what I like to hear. <laughs> Before we uh, head on to basketball, this. I want to just take a look at the first team, second team selections brought out by the Missouri Valley today. 
Uh, Joe Lund and Billy Turner, I think very well deserving name to the first team. A surprise at Adam Keller, a guy that we had a huge question mark before the season, all first team kicker uh, for North Dakota State. Well, he tied a school record for field goals made in the season with 16 out of 20 attempts. That's 80%. That's a pretty good uh, mark. Grant Olson and Marcus Williams, no surprises there uh, on the first team as well. Second team, Brock Jensen leads the way at quarterback. Uh, another solid year out of uh, number 16. Ryan Smith makes it at wide receiver. I think Cole Jarrett could have been first team. I really do. He makes second team along with Levon Perry. I think so, too, although we weren't avo- allowed to vote for yeah, guys in your own correct. area. So uh, I, I would have put Jarrett on a first team. Travis Beck, Christian Dudzik, and Kyle Emanuel. I think all three guys who could have been second team. Mm-hmm. I think you could make all 11 guys on the Bison defense, especially without Colton Heal playing a majority of the season. When you lead the Division I FCS in scoring defense, yeah. yes, there's a case to be made. Now, football obviously will dominate the talk as we get near the end of the week, but Thursday and Friday, there's some really big games going on at the Bison Sports Arena. The North Dakota State men's basketball team will open Summit League play with Nebraska-Omaha. Jeff, the Bison lost their last game with Green Bay, but are coming off a tournament sweep for the second straight year in Pittsburgh. What do you see out of the men after taking uh, that game with Indiana? They did that last year when they won the tournament at San Francisco. Now you have to sustain it. That's something they didn't do last year over the long haul the next two months to sustain that kind of... Uh, great play. I'm curious to see Omaha. I haven't seen Omaha play in, in forever. And I'm wondering what how they've done this transition, where yeah. they are at. Uh, they still have three years or four years yeah, to go before the they're eligible. Uh, th- yeah, so uh, maybe they're pretty decent. Maybe they're not. I'm curious. Also, on Friday night will be the great reunion between UND and NDSU on women's basketball. Haven't played since 2004. Each team is struggling. UND has not won a game yet. The Bison have come in at 3-3. Three and three. They lost by 26 to a Division II team in Alaska Anchorage. I think it'll be a really good crowd. I just don't know what to expect out of this game because I don't think either the coaches really know what to expect out of their teams yet. Again, I haven't seen the UND women play forever. It just <laughs> seems like uh, maybe when Gene Roebuck and all those teams were winning Division II titles, that's, that's gonna probably be weird. the last he, time. And I'm... he's not going to be there either on the sideline. That's going to be weird. No, it, it's it, it's the start of something new. Now, whether that draws a big crowd, I don't know. Uh, you know, in the old days, yeah. the teams were 12-1 and 13-0 and 0 when they played their first time. And, um, you know, and, and they had players who I think made a real connection mm-hmm. to the fans just because of, of the winning ways. you got to win in this town. NDSU is yeah. 3-3, three and three and they need to string some wins together. What's your in- instinct tell you for a crowd on Friday night? I don't know. I uh, three 2,000? I, 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 don't, I don't think it's going to sell out. I, I think uh, when you renew a rivalry, I don't think you can expect to go back 10 years and say, boom. Yeah, you know, we're, we're starting where we left right. off. I think ba- men's basketball, though, would say that. They got 10,000 at the Fargo Dome two years ago when they played, and I'm sure football, whenever they oh, eventually okay, do Mr. that. Okay, Mr. Smarty Pants, I'm what do you saying. think? I'm just saying, I would say 3,500. Oh, so you have to go up th- above me by I'll, 500. I'll, I'll go 3,500 will be the attendance I'm Friday. saying 3,501. It's <laughs> the price is right here on the <laughs> Bison video blog. So that'll wrap it up for today. Of course, we'll have full coverage, Jeff, in the newspaper, myself on television leading up for the game. It's a 3 o'clock kick available on ESPN Game Plan or ESPN3. So make sure you make the video blog and the live blog your home on Saturday. I don't know what uh, you've got pulled out. I don't know what E's got coming on Saturday, but I'm sure mm. it's going to be fabulous Ooh. for the pregame show. The possibilities are endless. <laughs> there you have it, folks. The latest edition of the Bison Video Blog. 